Hey, my fellow um, colleagues in the council. Um, let me see who's in the call. Um, hmm. Not sure if I are any council members in the call. Okay, so then we want to welcome Jaime, Alicia, yeah. superintendent. Hi, and Robert Hello. Uh Hi, Robert. It's been a long time. Yeah, yes, thank you very much. Yes, and then um, so I just wanted to introduce before we move into the discussion. Um, the we are uh, presenting legislation uh, uh, for the 20, Monday, June 22nd. Um, hold on, give me a minute. He, we have here. Um, this is the facilitator for the Syracuse Youth Advisory Council in this year 2020. Uh, the services were interrupted, so there has been an adjustment to payment and we will put, put it through uh, with a total value of $1,500. Uh, so this is going to uh, be moved to the agenda for our next uh, meeting. Um, so uh, is there if, are there any questions about that? I'm not sure if I have any of the uh, council members in the call. I see some some um, users, uh, phone users, but not sure. Okay, so with that said, uh, we'll mo move into the presentation. Uh, Superintendent, do you want to say a few words? Well, yes. Uh, again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here again this afternoon and to have uh, Robert Leslie with us. He is the Director of Career and Technical Education for the Syracuse City School District. Uh, our career and technical education program has grown immensely during the past five years in the district. Uh, when we opened our first CTE program at the Institute of Technology, there were only uh, six programs in the school. Uh, today, we have 26 different programs in the district, and we continue to work with the community and hopefully uh, with the new STEAM school that is gonna be a reality uh, soon, we will expand those programs. But I would like for uh, Bob Leslie to uh, do a presentation about uh, the programs that we have, the attendance of the kids and everything that CTE is doing for the kids in the district. Uh, we have seen an increase in the graduation rates in the district and part of the success that we have had is due to a career and technical education. We know that the kids who are in CTE program has better attendance, they're doing better academically. And we would like to have every kid in the district uh, to be part of a pathway in the district. Of course, that if I say that, Bob Les is gonna say yes, <laughs> show me the money, because he is- And we'll I build new programs. Say, <laughs> I always say that he is my most expensive staff member that I have in the district. Uh, and not in a bad way. We want to make sure that our kids have great opportunities, but they have the equipment that they're going to be using in the uh, market, in the job later on. It's not that they're going to sit and use a computer and try to figure things out. We want to provide them with the real hands-on experiences that they're going to use uh, in the market later. So again, thank you for having me join you this afternoon. Uh, I'm gonna give you a warning, and then Bob also knows about that. I have a five o'clock with the state task force on reimagining education. So if I live, uh, Bob will stay, and Pam Oden is uh, also joining us. So Bob, okay, I'm gonna to try to. It. I'm gonna share my PowerPoint, and I'm gonna. Thank you. And we'll get this thing started. And I have the option to. I'm a, I'm a little unsure of the WebEx uh, format, but here we go. All right. There, I'm not too bad. <laughs> I'm, we've been using Zoom a lot, so uh, this is a new one for me. So thank you. So uh, as the superintendent said, I'm, I'm the Robert Leslie. I'm the director for career and technical education, and I thank you for the opportunity to talk to the uh, the counselors about um, what what CTE is and what it is for our, our children at Syracuse City School District. So. 
So I, I want you to think uh, about where we were, uh, like the superintendent said, we've been in about five years right now. Uh, in the past, we, we had traditional model programs that were run uh, at Central Tech um, where kids would uh, go to there to attend the programs. And those were the traditional models, much uh, set up like a BOCES model. Um, today, our current model is um, we, we have students, we have programs that are offered in every one of our high schools. And we have a total of uh, 27 programs. Uh, we offer pathways from ninth grade to 12th grade. So students will start a CTE pathway in ninth grade. Um, they have the opportunity to earn college level credits and degrees. Those are some of our PTEC programs, which I'll talk a little bit more. We also have tremendous opportunities for our students for credential. Um, how many high school students do you know that can earn their EMT license certificate in high schools as, as a senior? So these are some of the things we're very big about. Uh, opportunities for students to really get a head start on their career, head start on college, um, and, and jumping into that to move forward for that plan for life. We're also looking to start our middle schools. So now that we've got our high schools established, um, we are going to start the process of building our middle school curriculums with implementation starting for the sixth grade class in fall of 2021. So we're very excited about that because that, that's even going to make us uh, a lot more connected at the middle school level, getting students really prepared to think about all the different opportunities are, are there for them. So superintendent, uh, talk to you a little bit about our growth. Uh, this is a chart that represents our growth. And as we started the program development in the district, we brought on ninth grades and then you brought a grade on every year, uh, a grade level. So you can see the growth. So we're about 1700 students at the end of uh, uh, 2019. That represents uh, about 27, 28% of our kids in the whole district. Like the superintendent said, uh, we'd love to have all kids on pathway, um, but we'll, we're will we going to be adding each year because some of our programs are still in their first and second year, and we'll be adding students as we go through each year. This is a list of all the different programs, and it has some of our, what you would consider more traditional CTE programs, but it also has some programs that are way out there on that IN spectrum, uh, some of the ones like cybersecurity, um, geo, geospatial, drone technology, or remote RPAS, we're, and, and we're the only district, we are the only district in the state of New York that offers some of these higher end programs. And we were the first programs that were certified by the state of New York and had the first certified teachers. So that's quite an accomplishment for Syracuse City uh, to go from four or five, six programs to 27 programs in five years and also be leading the state in a lot of these opportunities. So we're very excited about that. And I, I really appreciate the superintendent's support because he is he's phenomenal at making sure that our kids at the district have the right the, the right stuff to do and, and right stuff to learn from. So. So you can't do career and technical education without partnerships. So we're very big on partnerships. Our business and community partnerships, uh, we have a uh, an advisory council. It's a, the superintendent's partnership council. Uh, consists of a lot of our uh, community members from all different levels of business, uh, comprised about 40 people. Then we have our, our, our that I consider that our 40,000 foot view uh, council. The other councils that we have is each program has what I call a 500 foot view. And it's made up of people from the actual businesses that sit. So for the electrical trades, we have the IBW sitting with us at the, at the table on that uh, electrical trades program, making sure that we're meeting the needs of what they need for the kids to be successful in the next career uh, challenge. So um, we also do a lot of career coaching. How many places uh, do you know in, that bring ninth or have ninth graders sitting down with people from businesses and talking about careers and, and ask and giving a, our students a chance to ask people who come from a, a company that is involved with drones or a company who's involved uh, with medical assistance and give them a chance to actually talk to business professionals. So we also provide internships and shadowing for students. And that gives our kids to really see what it's like to really get the flavor. You know, um, do, do I like the, the healthcare field or not? We get that chance through the shadowing. So shadowing and internships. We also have some great post-secondary partners. Um, our, our students earn have the opportunity to earn a tremendous amount of college credit while they're in high school. Um, we, we partner uh, in, uh, with uh, a lot of our local colleges, uh, Onondaga Community College, SUNY Broome, Mohawk Valley. And a lot of our programs, we have six uh, PTEC programs. These students are eligible to earn an associate's degree in, their, in the, the, path, the pathway that they've chosen at no cost. So think about an opportunity where you can be a, a, a ninth grader, you choose you're going into a mechanical tech PTEC program, 
and you have the opportunity to come out uh, by the time on your fifth year uh, or sixth year of uh, school of earning your associate's degree at no cost and having an opportunity to go right to work. So we're very excited about that. We also look for that stackable credentials. We want college, career, and everything to be together. All right, it's not college or career. It's got to be both and everything tied together. So when, when we build CTE programs at Syracuse City, we always think about the end of mind. And the end of mind is a vision for our students to develop. And we are very big on bringing in our business partners and our, 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 our teachers and our CTE teachers and our school counselors and start with the end of mind. What do we want kids to be able to do at the end of their high school career? So we work to develop curriculum. If you go onto our website, which I'll give you the link to a little bit later, um, our website has every one of our curriculums that's been developed. We post them out there. It's kind of a trademark for us because everybody comes to Syracuse City's webpage to pull their curriculum for all different kinds of CTE programs. We're always aligned to industry standards. That's why we bring our business partners in. We have a huge tie to career readiness practices. We follow 12, 12 career readiness standards, and these standards help us to, we start these right in ninth grade. We will be starting these down in sixth grade once we get our middle school program running, but this is to teach kids what the expectations are for the business world and, and that teamwork, the collaboration piece. Um, so it's, it's very, very, um, uh, uh, you know, enhancing this career readiness because we have to uh, have our kids understand what their expectations are to hit that career. Um, we're also aligned to the Career Common, Common Technical Core, which is the national curriculum for career and technical education. And like I said, our, our students have huge opportunities to earn national credentials, college credit, and college degrees. So when you think about CTE programs, you also got to think about teachers. So our teachers are a little different because our teachers typically don't come through the traditional educational path. They come through the uh, uh, pathway of work. So our cybersecurity teacher was working in an insurance firm as a cybersecurity specialist. Um, our engineering teacher uh, was working at, um, uh, I can't think of the company, it's one of the new ones uh, that did the digital, the uh, lights and uh, the LED lights. Um, he was an engineer for them. So our teachers come from the world of work. We, ha we have to, uh, uh, yeah, Ephesus, that's it. We, we have to develop these teachers to be uh, teachers. So we have a whole process on how we do that. We partner with an organization called the Southern Region Educational Board. They have a, a research-based uh, teacher training program for CTE teachers, and it's 26 days of intensive training because we know that if we don't spend the time with our teachers and developing them and teaching them how to be great teachers, they already have great business experience, but they need to be great teachers. So we're, uh, the superintendent and our school district is very invested in making sure that we provide that development for our teachers. So conclusions and just to, some of the, what the data tells us, and like the superintendent said, we have increased engagement. Uh, our attendance, we measure everything in CTE because that's uh, we're held to that by our partnership council. Um, we have great attendance. Um, our, we have a, a great graduation rates. Um, we also prepare kids for uh, college and career. We have students who are finishing some of these P-TECH programs and being offered jobs right out of their uh, second first year in college um, at some of our local businesses. And we also credential students. So if you are interested in looking at the data, we uh, our partnership council requires that we produce the data once a year. And this is our 19, uh, this is our data uh, for school year 1920. If you go back and, or no, excuse me, data, it's the school year uh, 20 or 18, 19, and you'll get a chance to look at that. Um, and the web page is there. So if you'd like to see just the data about our, our districts and what we measure, what we uh, kind of keep track of, it's right there. So at this point, um, like I said, in summary, we have seven, 27 C, uh, career and technical education pathways. We have strong partnerships with business and higher education. Uh, we have uh, more students graduating and graduating career and college ready. And so with that, I'm going to turn it back and, uh, to the superintendent. And I'll stop my share if I can figure out how to do that. <laughs> so. I think that's our uh, quick presentation. I just... Uh, would like to give the opportunity to ask any questions that you may have and we will answer your questions so so let me ask a question superintendent or or, or robert um uh, i i i remember these discussions when i was at in in the board uh, but i forget so if a student starts a program and to find out there it's not for him or her uh do they i mean they go through the program for one semester or maybe a year, and then what can they can they choose something different for next year? Are, are they then out of the program? What, what, what happens then? 
Superintendent, we'd like you to. Uh, so, I'll, I'll, so um, one one of the things, um, uh, uh, Councilor, that we're looking to do is um, is a student starter program. We try to make sure there's an interest there. So, uh, students, we have the opportunity to, uh, to sit down and have a conversation prior to the students entering into ninth grade, and that's their their eighth grade interview. We call it, and we really make try to make sure it's the right program. If it's not, then depending on where they are in the process, um, they have options. They can uh, transition back to a traditional academic path if they'd like to do that. Um, we, depending on how far they are in ninth grade, we could find another pathway that works for them. Um, but traditionally, if, if they decide they don't like it, they'll, tr they'll transfer back into or they'll, they'll uh, transition back into a traditional academic educational pathway. Okay. All right. And then, you know, my other question would be, I mean, there's 26 programs altogether. Uh, it's grown really fast, uh, the, the whole CTE program space. So how do you financially support this? This is through grants and what else? Uh, this is most, mostly through the district uh, A budget. Uh, we do have some grants for the PTAC programs, but the other programs are uh, funded through uh, taxpayers' money, the money that we get from the city and the state of New York. I'm sure, you know, if I would ask, you know, if you have enough resources to uh, <laughs> to run all, all 26 programs, I'm sure the answer will always be no. <laughs> <laughs> As I said at the beginning, uh, Mr. Lassie is the most expensive staff member that I have. Uh, one example of, you know, we want to provide the kids with real, real uh, experiences. And this past year, uh, we just reopened. Uh, the welding program at Corcoran High School. Uh, the beginning when they all centered tech program, the program was there, then it was moved to the uh, Johnson Center. So knowing that we wanted to have all the CTE programs in the high school, we moved the program there. And uh, I was sold the idea that uh, moving the program, it was probably going to cost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Uh, <laughs> at the end, I found out that it was a little more than that. But the difference is that our student there has the Lincoln uh, equipment, the, the equipment that is being used in the business sector. They have a robot there that they learn how to use and do welding with that. So it's real hands-on experiences. So. Is it expensive? It's expensive, but we want to make sure that our kids are going to be ready to compete for those employment opportunities that are available in Central New York. Because one of the things that we're doing with our CTE programs, we look at the job market that is going to be in Central New York. We're not creating programs for kids to go down to New York City, go to California and all that. We want to make sure that when our kids graduate, when they complete their programs, they're going to stay here in Central New York mostly in the city of Syracuse, of course. So those are the things that we're doing with our CTE pathway. Knowing that the drone technology or a main area system is the market that is growing in the future, we have the program on how to uh, fly uh, the drones at BSLA at Fowler, but now we are gonna be expanding our uh, program at the STEAM school and it's on teaching the kid how to use that equipment to gather data, how to analyze that data, and how to be proficient so they can compete for those uh, employment opportunity. We're also gonna be teaching them on how to repair that equipment. So we know that, you know, uh, they gotta learn how to fly it, but sometimes the equipment break down. So we wanna make sure that they also know how to repair that equipment. So those are the things that we're working on so we can have our kids have real hands-on experiences uh, in the different job markets. Do they all get an opportunity for internships or is that a hard thing to attain? So uh, we require all the programs to uh, have internships or work job shadowing experience or, or something, uh, counselor. Um, it, some of them are very easy to get. Some of them are a little harder. For example, when you get into the healthcare programs, um, that one gets into a little bit more challenging with the HIPAA regulations and things like that. But we also participate. We have a great partner with SUNY Upstate. We Our kids participate like the meds program. So they're on their campus up there. They're, they're working with their new, uh, their, their new doctors that run this meds program. 
and they get various experience. So they really get a lot of hands-on experience in all the programs. I, I wish I could put uh, every student on and guarantee them uh, so many much time on internships, but we're, we're actually get, we're getting, a, uh, we're getting there. It's, it's challenging. Uh, we started working with Syracuse city this year. Um, just so you know, um, we, we branched in and we, uh, before our uh, exodus from COVID, we, we started to have some conversations with getting some of our students interning through the city. So we're very excited about that. I think it's a great opportunity. It also gives our students a chance to see what's available for them. So now that you mentioned COVID, um, I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm sure there's the plan is still not clear uh, for for the fall. Um, however, you know if if you decide to to go back to the classrooms or not, how does this affect these programs either way? Superintendent, would you like me to address, or are you going to take that? Go ahead and address it from CTE, <laughs> and then I talk about the general. With the whole perspective. That we are um, going. So, Commissioner, we're we're planning right now because Career and Tech Ed has a lot of hands-on portions to it. So we're 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 thinking about that for next year to be prepared if if we're virtual or if we're we're in some type of hybrid model or or actually back, because um, there's certain things we can simulate in in a and in, in do in activities that uh, form around Career and Tech Ed. The hard part is it's hard to teach kids to to weld or do those hands-on tasks um, if we can't get them in the lab. So um, we'll 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 adjust curriculum as we go forward. Um, so that when we do get back to, to where we're in school at a full, a full capacity, we'll make sure that the experience is, is woven back in for the students. So, okay. And as a district, we have a reopening committee that is working on a, three different models or possibilities, whether we come back to a uh, brick and mortar in September, whether it's going to be a hybrid, hybrid uh, combination, probably in the fall will be online and then Break a model, or whether we're going to be uh, uh, online all year long. Uh, we have four subcommittees that are looking at four components the social and emotional for the kids and the families, uh, the wellness and culture for the staff, the academic or the academic program that we're going to have, and the operations and the finance. I mean, what are the things that we're going to be doing in order to make sure that all our kids, our staff is safe? What are going to be the procedures? What is going to happen with transportation? Uh, what are we going to do, you know, for temperature check for the kids? How often are we going to clean the building? Uh, how uh, are we going to keep track of all those things that are taking place? At the same time, uh, I'm working, I'm a member of the governor's task force for reopening and the state education department also is going to have a task force uh, that is going to have a virtual meeting next uh wednesday from two until five o'clock gathering feedback from all the stakeholder parents teachers administrators all over new york state to give us some guidelines for the reopenings of the schools uh in september so it looks like september will be a reopening uh looks like i mean we know that last uh friday the governor said that we could do face to face with uh the special needs student so we're trying to figure out how we're going to do it because we were already working on a plan that it was uh, to provide virtual education. So we are working on that. As long as the situation maintains the way it is and the COVID cases do not go up and the infection rate remains the way it is, I think that we'll be back in person. Again, that's my opinion based on the data that is there right now. Uh, we don't know. All of this will depend on the behavior of the New York residents. So, you know. Yeah. 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 Uh, Council Major, do you have uh, do you want do you have any questions for uh, Superintendent or Robert Leslie? I just had a question about the the CT, especially in how it works. Um, in in terms of, I mean, beside student expressing interest what are some criteria that 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 student have to meet to be part of the ct because i understand that not all students are ct students right so i just want to know what what criteria student have to fulfill to be able to to be part of that are the, are the grades or is there is what what is, what qualifies student as a ct student beside interest you want to talk about it? Yeah. So, so what? Um, what? Uh, fair and everything yes. that we do. 
So, so, um, uh, Councilor, we, we spend a tremendous amount of time um, educating our, our students um, in the middle schools um, right now um, about what career and technical education is. We work with our school counselors, our middle school counselors, and, and we also run a CT Expo in January for uh, eighth grade. Um, it's kind of our culminating event before the, the students will apply for Pathways. Um, and it's it's really where all 27 programs are on display, where our kids that are in the program spend time um, ex, ex, talking to student, the, the incoming eighth graders uh, about what the CT pathways are like. And the superintendent mandates that all eighth graders uh, attend this uh, opportunity so they get a chance to see what, um, you know, what, what is uh, welding really like or, or what is uh, uh, the natural resources program. And so um, then from there, students will pick um, their top three choices of programs. And, and then we, we will get into, we, we, uh, we will reach out to the students and we go through an interview process. And the, the reason we do the interview process is really to make sure students are interested in the pathway because um, we, you know, we don't want you to pick Henniger because it's got a great football team. You know, we, we, we want you to pick Henniger because you like health careers and uh, the health pathways with the CTE pathways. So, um, so what happens is during the interview process, uh, a team of teachers from the programs and the counselors will sit down with the students and um, other other parties from the school um, and have a conversation with the student. And we, 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 uh, oh, oh, you know, we don't, we look at grades and, and attendance, but that's not the qualifying factor for students. It's really about, do I, do I really uh, want to uh, uh, become a clinical lab technician or do I really understand that? And I think that's what, the, why the interview is, because what we find is if we, if we help students make better choices, we have better uh, retention for the pathways. So, um, so it's, it's really about, we ask the question, so what, what do you, what do you like to do? You know, what are some of your hobbies? And, you know, and, and we're trying to see um, if, you know, if a student says, wow, I, I really love uh, working with, with drones. You know, I, I, it's my passion. I, I, I got two drones at home. I mean, that's what helps us qualify kids for those pathways because if, if that's what we find, they, they maintain their interest on when we come in. So they, they get the choice, they uh, apply for the pathways, they get accepted through the interview process, and then they, we go to lottery because some of our programs might have 200 uh, students interested in it. Um, and so kids that qualify go to the lottery and, and then uh, the system picks uh, 28 random kids. They all, they all just qualify. They don't, we don't pick them by the, the best interview or the, the worst interview. It's all by uh, how they, uh, all the lottery system picks the students for the programs. So what percent of students are engaged in these programs? Um, uh, so our overall engagement is about 27% of the high school population, uh, counselor. Um, and and rough, roughly, we target to get about, uh, I, I'm going to say, uh, super, I think it's close to 700 out of about a class of 1,350 of the 7th, uh, 8th uh, graders will uh, come into CT pathways eventually. So. Sorry, Schultz, but did you have any other questions? I jumped in. I do have, <laughs> I do have a follow up. So, so with that being said, what's, what's, what's the budget usually? What, 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 what percentage of budget does, does that, does CTE takes from, from the district? Honestly, I will have to get back to you because uh, I just have to perform the miracle for Bob. <laughs> he won't tell me my budget. <laughs> so, no, just kidding. Um, no, I, yeah, superintendent has that one. So, I'll get back to you with the dollar amount. My, my is now, how many of these students return to the community and and still stay in the community and move out of it? Ooh, um, you, you know, that's one of those uh, one of the data points that we're, we're just starting to our partnership council is driving to us like what what's happening to the students once they leave the school district. And we're, we're trying to come up with a good metrics and a good way to measure that, because that's one of the toughest points that we have to, to collect. Um, we, we know like the students who are going through the PTEC pathways that go to OCC or Mohawk Valley or uh, Broome, we have great data and connections on with those because we're forced to follow them through years five and six. Um, a lot of our, a lot of our kids uh, are, you know, we're just starting to figure out how, how we're going to track them because um, 
our, our cell phone population with our students tend to change their numbers so quickly. So this is something that we're working on through our partnership councils. How do we know we're being successful? So it's uh, yet to be found. We're just getting to the point where that's going to really start to uh, you know uh, be met because our, we're really getting to our full capacity in some of the programs. So, so Councilor, I hope to be able to get back to you in the near future with an answer on that one. A lot of our kids are staying local because they're getting employment opportunities uh, in the businesses that they're doing internships. So, okay. Now, now with 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 that, thank you. Uh, if you can get just, I mean, it's good to know a data like that. Now, my other question, my other my other question is, um, you know, as 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 a community, that there was this. Uh, a story I read back with about skill gap, especially when it comes to the minority. Uh, now, with, with, with the CTE, is there pretty much balance of, of minority students uh, engaging in both process and, and are taking advantage of that? And if so, what's, 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 what's the percentage of, of minority versus, you know, uh, uh, students? Talk about minority, I'm, I'm speaking about Folks like uh, New Americans, you know, uh, uh, African American, Latinos, like that. Uh, it is very similar to the district total uh, minority population. Uh, we are about when we put everyone together, about seventy percent minority in the district. So it's very similar to that number. Uh, we have made an effort to make sure that we have representation from all our uh, student races, gender, and all that. Uh, one of the good things is that we have more female students also going into the CTE pathway. So uh, it is very similar to our uh, uh, student population. But we'll get you that too. Yeah, Councilor, that if you uh, that that the one web uh, address I gave you shows our data, and and as the superintendent said, it'll show you exactly the numbers as compared to students who aren't in our pathway. And, and like the superintendent said, it's almost duplicate of what our numbers are. So in the CT pathways versus not pathways. Okay. Okay. Well, well, Councilor Peniawa, that's it for me. Thank you. I have a quick question to ask you. So. Um, I, in, in remembering the conversations when I was in the in the in the um, in the board, uh, I I remember um, you saying that most of the teachers were adjunct. Um, um, is that still the case? Uh, uh, commission or uh, uh, concert? No, um, our teachers are full time teachers now. They're teaching a full load. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they're they're regular uh, uh, normal uh, teachers in the district right now. So. So does that, that I'm sure that makes a, a big difference. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because they, they, they uh, the one thing I always say, the CT teachers have the kids for four years, so they build huge relationships with these our students. So because um, they see them as freshmen and they graduate them as seniors. Okay. Um, and Commissioner Allen, uh, I mean Councilor Allen, are you? Uh, do you have questions? I see you're in the call in the. I, so, so if if can I can I just jump in? I, I don't hear Council Allen. She here? Yeah, she's she's laughing. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, another question, uh, 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 Superintendent, is um, with with CTE is is there is there a connection with local unions? With yes. Trade union and all of that. Yes, and um, Mr. Leslie spoke about with the IBEW and those with the other ones, Bob. Uh, we're working with the steel workers and we're also tied very tightly to the carpenters union. So we just um, had them present to all of our, our kids in, in the, uh, our skilled trades areas um, just, just within the last three weeks. They did it all through Zoom. So, yeah, there's huge opportunities and we encourage our kids to look at uh, the labor unions opportunities for them. All right. Thank you. Councillor Allen, are you, uh, do, you, do you want to ask some questions? can't hear her. Okay. Are there any other questions in the floor? Anybody else has a question for uh, Mr. Leslie or the superintendent? Okay. 
Okay. So the one thing, uh, Superintendent, that I would really like to 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 refresh uh, my memory with, you know, and I know you don't have that that um, information available right now. Uh, that would have been a Susan question probably. Uh, it's you know if you can send us um, some information about how you fund these programs and and you know uh, ver uh, cost versus uh, the, the, what is grant money what it what it's not you know the, how, how do you how do you you make it happen financially it would be great for us to learn that yeah and we will do that uh, again most of the programs are a uh, budgeted in the a budget uh the pt ptac program we have grant money for that uh this year there was a little uh moment that we were a little scared whether the uh, we were going to get funding for the first program that we had the first cohort and at the end the governor's office and the state education department uh decided that they were going to continue to provide the funding for that but the plan for the PTAC program was that, you know, for the district to build capacity, they were going to fund the programs at the beginning, but uh, then at the end, it will be the district responsibility. So we had a backup plan for that because, I mean, it is a great program that we have with OCC, and we wanted to make sure that we continue with the program. So uh, if we we just have to put things in priorities, and if we, if we know that these programs are successful, we need to do everything that we can to continue to uh support this this program and it's the partnership that we also have with the uh, businesses with the unions and all that uh today i got a phone call from offstate because there's a kid in the health career program who wants to pursue a career now in nursing and they call me that they want to offer the kid a scholarship already she's oh, only nice. in, ninth, in ninth grade but they're already making a commitment with this oh, student yeah. to go to offstate and become a nurse. So those are the things and the opportunities that uh, CTE is providing to our kids in our community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, this is this is great information. Uh, let me ask you one more thing. So the I mean, with with the potential cuts co coming your way, uh, when you were talking about uh, the governor assuming responsibility for some of the costs of, of the program. Were you talking about the upcoming semester or the one that just that just finished? Well, that's for next year, but every next now year. we have to wait to see what happens. <laughs> okay. So so you I mean we'll the good thing with that all the is yeah uh especially for the PTAC program we have businesses that they have been involved uh being advocate for us for the school district right into the governors, right into the elected officials. I mean, we have been honestly blessed that our delegation in Albany believe in CTE education and the work that we are doing. Uh, Assemblyman Magnarelli, Assemblywoman Hunter, and Senator May, I mean, they have been great advocating for uh, CTE education in Syracuse so we can continue to support our pathway and to expand our pathway as we continue uh, with our proposal for the STEAM high school. So, and, so the, and so is the mayor and the common council and the county executive. So we are, I mean, when the state education department talks about CTE education, they talk about Syracuse and they refer people to Syracuse so they can talk to us about what are we doing uh, with CTE education because uh, no other districts out there have seen the same increase in enrollment as we have in Syracuse. And the and I mean the the this past semester, you know, when when the when we all shut down, um, could, were you able to continue the CTE education up to now? I mean, did yes. they finish the semester? Yes. Okay. We will. We had to readjust. A lot of them is online. You know, a lot of packets and information that uh, were delivered by teachers and delivered by a, our transportation department or kids, you know, ma mailings that we did, but we have been able to to continue with uh, with these pathways for, for the kids, so. Okay. All right, that's all the questions I had. Uh, does anybody else have a question that they would like to ask Superintendent Alicea 
or Robert Leslie. Okay, we'll take that as a no. So thank you so very much for uh, joining us today and bringing this important information to us. If you please remember to send me and I'll share it with all the council uh, the financials of this program uh -huh. yep. so that we have a, a better idea of where the shortfalls may be and, and who knows. <laughs> right. I mean, sorry, but Susanna is participating in another Zoom conference. That's why she's not part of this one today. So no, that's okay. That's okay. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Uh, I will call you to see what other information would be pertinent to bring to council uh, as okay. we as we move forward. Thank you so much for all, for the time you 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 you, you spend with us uh, here at Pleasure. the council. Thank you, Robert, for all your work and and your presentation today. Thank you. All right. So thank you much. Thank you, everyone. Okay, Bye. So just to confirm, the item is ready. The one item. Yes, the item is ready. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you.